I'm Aaron Puglisi. I'm one of the soft goods designers here at Bellroy, and I'd like to welcome you to our headquarters in Bells Beach. Uh, we're about an hour and a half down the surf coast from Melbourne, Australia, and today we're going to be making some bags for the second episode of the Maker's Mystery Box series for Karyology. Alright, so Challenge Sailcloth has sent over a big box of uh, textiles for us to look at, so let's head over to the lab and see what we've got. Alright, let's see what we've got here. Oh yeah, there! <laughs> oh yeah, this is great. Oh, they've sent us so much stuff. Thank you, Challenge Sailcloth, for hooking us up. Um, we're going to make some really cool stuff out of this. We've got some of their EPX sailcloth with the, the square sort of diamond grid. We've got some of their ultra fabrics, looks like in a couple of different weights. Uh, we've got the ultra grid here in a couple of different colors. Right, these are originally sailcloths, right? Like made for competitive sailing. Thankfully, they've put some of that sort of um, expertise into pack cloths which we can now take advantage of. Um, they're adding in these, these, um, these plies of this higher tenacity, higher strength elements through the laminations that give you really good tear strength and structure in the fabrics. Um, really just beautiful laminations. They've got their, their ultra fabric, which is messing around with these sort of woven ultra high molecular weight polyethylenes. And they're just gorgeous. The different textures and, and um, patterns you get, the shadowing you get through some of these textures, right? So that you see the grid on, the, on one side and then it shadows through on the other. Yeah, this is gonna be great for, for a bag today. I think it's gonna be really interesting if we do a more traditional kind of rucksack vibe and use these technical materials to make a sort of a futuristic sort of rucksack. We'll use this heavier fabric probably on the base and some of these lighter ones. Um, throughout the rest of the pack. I really like the this lighter side of the orange. The, the front is pretty bright, but maybe we'll pull in some of this um, sort of lighter orange using the back side of the fabric. All right, so I think I've got the concept figured out. It's gonna be fairly boxy um, main section. Um, but we're gonna add a large sort of front pocket that adds a bit of character. It'll have two sort of straps that hold the top pocket in place. Um, that'll be good because we can, you can unstrap it, you can, you can toss a jacket underneath the hood and lock it into place and it gives you sort of extra volume. It's gonna have the zipper going down two sides. So for the back, I wanna do something a little bit more quirky and weird. Um, I think if we take and we laminate some of this Chan Sail cloth, some of the thinner stuff, and we use some of this sort of microfiber. We've got a few different options here. And we, we laminate it so that this is what is sort of ripping against you. It's gonna add some, some texture and it's not gonna slip or slide off of you. So it'll give you a really like tight sort of um, secure sort of feeling. But then what I also wanna do is have the back panel be Velcro. So down this whole back section of the bag, we're going to have the, the back straps be removable so you can fit the straps to yourself and then attach, sort of push the pack onto you in a way that makes it fit just right. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be weird. The back is gonna be all Velcro. Hopefully it sticks, hopefully it, it's gonna work, um, but we're gonna give it a try and see, see what we come up with. If I'm making a new bag, I usually start out with a paper mock-up, um, whether that's regular paper or whether it's this sort of cardstock, something heavier. Um, I like using this. It makes a boxier sort of bag, which doesn't feel like fabric, but it lets you sort of make the, see the full structure of the bag and also turn it into a pattern afterwards. So I'm gonna build a quick mock-up. We'll tape it all up, make sure we've got it right, and then I'll turn that. Um, we'll cut it apart and then turn those pieces into a pattern. We've got the basic shape, we've got the, the front panel with the pocket on it, um, and we've got our back panel. We have these, the main gusset down the side, but we're also gonna run these um, sort of angled, chamfered sort of uh, gussets down both sides as well. Um, and that's gonna give us a place to 
to insert our webbing for the top pocket. So that'll run down both sides and enter these two points there. The zipper is going to run over the, the top and down one side. So this side won't have any zipper on it. This is going to be the tricky part is the Velcro. So we're going to have most of this panel be the, the loop. Um, and we're gonna run it down, I think, onto this base. We'll have this, this seam is gonna run along here, but then this panel will fold across this point here so that um, we can just do a single piece of loop that runs down. Um, and that'll be sort of a, a soft sort of thing and it can be adjusted with how you wanna wear it. Um, we we'll just kinda have to see how that goes and with the, the waistband and how it attaches, I'll play that one by ear. But this should get us started. I'll cut this apart sort of along these different seam lines. Um, and we can get the pattern ready and start selling. So we've taken our paper mock-up and we've cut it apart and turned those individual pieces into our pattern. So we've got back panel, front, we've got our front pocket, top pocket, some of the gusset pieces and our base. So we should be good to start cutting fabric now and see how that goes. Very, very difficult to cut. The scissors are not doing it. I think I'm going to have to switch to a knife. All right, so we've got our pattern pieces down on our fabric. We've traced out the, the pieces themselves, and we've got all our different alignment points set up, so we should be good. Um, we started cutting. This stuff is really, really tough. It's the Ultra 400 White Lightning. Um, you get that shadow of the, the grid coming through the back. Um, this is going to make a really great pack because it's so darn tough. Like Even just trying to cut it with the scissors, like. It's, uh, it's a lot tougher than I thought it would be. day of sewing man um, but really happy with how this thing turned out so we've got our sort of traditional rucksack format um, but in a more futuristic sort of take um, we have our, our top pocket with the straps that run down traditional rucksack front pocket here that's sort of bolted on we've used the Fidlock V buckles here little magnetic um, closures which adds a nice futuristic touch and our coated zippers, of course. The front pocket zipper and main zipper run down two sides. So we get this sort of clamshell sort of opening, um, both on the, the main access and on this front pocket. Um, and we've got that nice orange hit that when this pocket is a little bit um, less full, you get a nice sort of glow, of that orange through the, this body fabric. Plenty of space in this front zone, um, open section in that main area. And then this top pocket is a really nice place to store smaller items. Um, the zipper runs down um, across the top and then down a bit on both sides. Um, so you get really good access into that top section. Both the webbing adjusters here on the back and these fit locks can be adjusted. So if you want to, you can sort of move this up and fit a jacket under there. Um, lets you carry just a little bit more volume. Um, at the end of the zips, tossed on these really long kind of playful sort of um, tabs that make it easy to, to open um, and close the zips. And then on the back panel, we've got, first of all, this nice orange sort of shadow coming through. And we've used the loop here on the back panel as well as some on the base. 
Um, and this lets us use this sort of removable, adjustable strap system. So you can slide this up and down depending on how you need to. These straps, um, they're adjustable again, like I said. You can take the Velcro off of there and adjust them. So I've used just a single layer of the challenge sailcloth here for the straps. And I'm really curious how this is gonna wear over time, but it should fit really nicely across the shoulders and contour really well. Then I have the aluminum webbing adjusters down here as well. All right, it's been a long day of sewing, but we've come up with something really interesting and um, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching, uh, carry on. It's one thing to design a bag on paper and to, to send it off to the factory, but getting to actually make it, getting to see the proportions, the seams, the construction, understanding how it's actually gonna be built, right? When you have to make it yourself, you've gotta know how to build it in a, in a practical way. There's just something about making it yourself, both um, from the satisfaction side, right? Of you made it and you now get to, to use that thing that you made, but also the understanding that you gained from it. Um, that it's just so valuable. If you're gonna work, working as a designer, it's, it's great to work in a space where you can make the product and really understand it, um, which is part of why I love soft goods. Um, it's one thing if you're doing injection molding or these other, these other um, processes, it's, it's, not, it's not the same as um, soft goods where you're constantly sewing every seam by hand. It's just a process that I love and I find very therapeutic and kind of zen. You can kind of get lost in the process. You, you you start in the morning and all of a sudden it's seven o'clock at night and um, where did the day go? Um, but you end up with a bag and it's a great thing, so.